Good afternoon, good evening, and good night. This is it's a type what of about news. The morning? Oh, people people yeah. watching the morning Dutch. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, I know. Don't raise your voice to me. Get popped on camera, right? Oh, how about that? Slap. I can't get out of black anymore. How about that? But well, you're getting so, a little black before that time. What about your resume? Yourself. You know. Introduce how about yourself. that? Introduce yourself. Yeah, my boy is good. Jeez. Um, uh, what's my name again? Bruce Robinson. That one. I'm Bruce Robinson. I wish I was Bruce Wayne, but you know, I like my parents. Anyway, we have a really special guest with us right now. And I, for those of you who don't know who Mr. Makai Dickinson is, why don't you tell him? Makai Dickinson, how you doing? Just an average drunk blue. Been around a little bit. Former PRP kind of executive. And now I'm just in the background doing my day and observing. Right. And what have you observed? I observed uh, quite a few, quite a bit, quite a bit. Oh, you know, details, man, details. Well, I've observed that first thing I would say is that we need some political maturity in this army. Mm. Well, I'll, I'll give you that one. A great deal of political maturity on both sides of the coin. Yeah. Stop, yeah. stop talking like the Donald. Yeah. Hey, listen, listen, listen to so what he said, she said, you know. Yeah. Stop drawing mud. Stop throwing Stop shit. Stop throwing mud like it's not a pile of crap on the other side that's going to be thrown back at you. That's right. Because when I, I feel like when both parties throw mud, we're the ones that get dirty. Yeah. And by he, us, the people. The yeah, people. people. Remember, we're the people. Yeah. 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 Nothing. Like quest. Yeah. At the end of the day, I just feel that it, the biggest concern for any government or opposition would be the people that they represent on both sides of the coin, regardless of what side of the field you stand on. In the middle of that field is the people you represent, and the priority must be towards them. Everything that you do, you should shift your energy towards meeting their needs and not being tit for tat with the other side of the pettiness. Because this is not getting us anywhere, and I feel that the young people in this island need to know, being the future leaders, that they're gonna have something decided to lead. And right now, I feel like both sides of the political coin are doing a disservice to this island and to the young people in particular. Yeah, and it's a lot of uh, confused young people right now. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of, you know, the whole independent thing, right? We have a situation right now in constituency 14 where the PLP has put forward a candidate, Wayne Keynes, he was a great man, but now you have a bit of a snub happening to Premier Cox, former premier and party leader, and you know, being a former party leader, we know that your visions don't always connect, but we have that mutual respect. We wanted to hear from somebody who is aligned with the PLP vision, as far as like how they want to take the island. What is your view on that situation happening with Paul Cox and uh, David Burke, as far as both of them being party leaders at one point? Well, first of all, when it comes to Donald Porter Cox, she was the premier and finance leader, finance minister of this island. And she carried on her task, and it's a very difficult task. And unfortunately, she met a sad fate in the last election. Now, most people would take that loss and say, okay, I'm packing up, I'm giving up. I, I have nothing left to offer, but she clearly feels she has something to offer. And I feel that based on these stories that have come out that I've heard, and I can only feel from what I'm seeing in the media or post in mainstream, that the situation was not, was not necessarily handled right. Could have been handled better. Communication could have been. Communication is key. And I just feel like we to get to the point where it is now, communication was not there. For a lady, uh, for Ms. Paula Cox's integrity, I feel that for her to consider being an independent candidate. She is not a decision she made lightly. Mm. It's not an opportunist move. She feels she has something to offer and she wants to offer it. She has unfinished business. Now, some people may have a negative view on the former female, and they may feel that she failed in her duties, particularly as the finance minister when she said she was a cog in the wheel. First, let me clear up, cog in the wheel. A wheel can't move without the cogs. And every cog in that wheel is important. So I don't feel like her statement saying that she was a cog in the wheel was a negative one. It just meant she was a team player. She's in it. She doesn't make the decision solely on herself, on her own. The wheel doesn't turn solely by her. 
so she can't make decisions just based off of her own perception or her own views. So for it to come to this point, I feel that she has a right to put herself out there and give people the opportunity to say yes or no. And if she feels that she wants to stand as an independent, I support her. I'll stand by it. Her support, her standing as an independent is not taking away support from the PLP. And not saying that she doesn't support the PLP. It's saying that she supports herself and what she can do while supporting the PLP. So I say, hey, go out there, do what you gotta do. And if you get in, you get in. If you don't, then we move forward. If she's standing boots, not necessarily. No one earns any boots. So not standing boots from anybody. No one earns a vote, a vote is a vote. If you're strong on the PLP, vote for the PLP. If you believe in protocols, vote for protocols. If you want to vote for the OBA, vote for the OBA. It's all individual choices, and no vote is a vote to anybody. You gotta get out there and work for it. If she's ready to work for it, they stand by it for that. I ain't for it. But don't, don't go back to what you said about, like, you know, her running as independent, supporting the PLP. That's, that's what you're saying, right? I, I, I'm not really okay with that. You know, if you're independent, then I would not want you to support any party. If your whole point of independent, as you keep saying, is to be bipartisan. I'm not speaking for her and saying okay. she's supporting the PLP. I'm just saying her running as an independent doesn't necessarily say that she doesn't support the PLP. Ah. I'm not saying that she's supporting the PLP because I I'm not part of conflict can't speak for I would just hope that she wouldn't be, because if she was running as independent, then I would very much call for, as well as I call for all independents to be, make sure that you are nonpartisan. I mean, I understand you come from the PLP, but if you're going to run as an independent, you have to keep an open mind on both sides. Well, she would have to be, because at this point, the way that it's been portrayed, you know, David Burt is not really it's engaging under in dialogue with her at this point, where she's apparently sent a lot of emails. Mm -hmm. and tried to reach out to uh, Mr. Byrne and he is not really engaging with her so it almost makes it look like that she is kind of a being forced into independence yeah because she now she wants to run for her constituency because I feel like you know after taking the loss that she took a I feel loss. like it's got to be something in her that kind of wants to do one more run and with, at that on that note I respect it because I feel like anybody who's a real fighter who's a real believer in a cause is going to want to come back for redemption as far as and actually work for that constituency. No, I applaud right? Paula yeah, for running yeah. as an independent. I, I have nothing yeah. but applaud her for that. You well, can, but you, you gotta also remember, David Byrne is not the PLP. And the PLP is not the people that you see on the front line. The PLP is a structure. The PLP is a political party, yes. But the PLP is a grassroots organization that was built and formulated as a vehicle for a certain segment, laborers in particular, of a meeting to engage and move forward together and to help and pool resources together. So she can support that, but still run and feel that she's got something to offer independently if she can't offer within that organization. That's what I'm trying to say. And that is, that is fair because you do have, we, as, as folks who are on the OBA side, right? Not us particularly because we are nonpartisan, but for people who actually do support the OBA, it's, they can't necessarily criticize Paul the Cox when we have Mark Pettingill. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, I can see how we kind of almost have to give that blind yeah. in a way, but it, at the same, the same time, day. yeah, but it's like we should challenge both sides to make sure that as independents, like my colleague said, that they, they need have to, to stay make sure that they're not positive. And we criticize the Jesus out of Mark Pattinger. But the thing about it is, to say be nonpartisan or not support the party, this this is a great sort of issue that they have because at the end of the day, I don't even care if you're a member of a party and you're a representative of a party, whether it be a member of parliament, member of the executive, a senator, or whatnot, or just an average member, your priority. Your number one priority should always be the constituents. So party partisans sit beside, it's the constituents. That should take realm over everything. You should, your main focus should be what your constituents want, what the people that put you in that position want. 
So partisan has nothing to do. When your loyalty lies as far as partisanship has nothing to do with your loyalty to lie when it comes to service. However, I'm talking like like big decisions that like when both parties go into the house and they delegate and they have to vote on certain issues, we would in that in instances like that for countrywide problems that extend past one's constituency, that is what we mean by we would have to make sure that we call for um, nonpartisan because I mean I mean, when we criticize Mr. Pettingu, like, you know, you went independent and then just started almost like being baby PLP. That's one thing we that's one thing we cannot agree with. You know, if if you're independent, then your job is almost to keep the balance between them. Mm-hmm. Like you can't let I mean what what I what I would hope from the independence, what should be from the independence, is you have point A and you have point B. So you like they should be the middle of the scale that weighs both of them equally because if you have you know if you have independence siding with one or the other then what's the point of having them in the first place but they do get a certain luxury like i mean i feel like if paula cox was to win the seat independent i won't rule anything out she would have a bit of a of a bligh compared to mr pettingill because mr pettingill was elected to be eight mm-hmm. versus with Miss Cox, she would be she elected, would be elected independent. as independent, which we're completely okay with. Yeah, so, no, we were not okay yeah, with. Yeah, that would be different if she was to feel convicted to side with one side on an issue. She could preferably go whichever way her conscience took her. Or she should go, be, as you said, the best way that's best for her constituency. Exactly. And at the end of the day, when you get to the House of Assembly, when it comes to party politics, when you get to the House of Assembly under this Westminster system, you already know where you're voted. And that's just a conscious vote. You're whipped. You've already gone to con- caucus within your party and voted on where your party is going to vote on this matter. So you get into the House of Assembly, in debate, yeah, 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 you go back and forth. But at the end of the day, you know what side you're voting on. You've already been whipped into it, you vote in caucus. An independent candidate does not have a caucus. That caucus that that independent candidate has, her decision or his decision, so like based solely on having meetings with their constituents, talking to their constituents, and engaging with their constituents and getting consensus of what their cons- constituents want. Then going into the House of Assembly, her vote should not be a vote with the PLP or a vote with the OBA. It should be a vote based on what my constituents want. And that should be across the board. But when it comes to party, I guess that gets hashed out in caucus. Oh, my constituents say this, my constituents say that. They take a vote, and whoever wins that vote, that's where the party goes, and that's where they vote. But with an independent, it's that, that, that caucus is that consistent. Yeah, and every single country has that, um, that whip, where it's like, you know, yeah. you, you have a, a party, and you know, before a bill or anything hits the floor in America, the votes have already been pre-tallied whether it will pass or fail, based mm-hmm. on the fact of, you know, each uh, party leader with it, you know, yeah. getting the votes and already pre-calculating that stuff or forecasting it at least. So Bring back the monarchy. You don't like the king chop his head off. <laughs> yeah. I've been saying that for years. Bring it back. But I mean, I, I also wanted to discuss, you know, with, like you said, with party politics, like how do you feel being somebody who was was in a party for a significant amount of time? How do you feel that the party politics is done? Is it? Do you feel like it's beneficial to the people or do you feel like it could use some work or some tweaking? Well, first of all, I'm still, I'm still a member of the Congratulate Party. I'm just not an active member at the moment. But I'm still a member and the grassroots of the party has my support. But when it comes to party politics, even when I was an executive of any party, when I was a candidate, my hope for thing is party politics in itself is destructive. It's digressive. It's something that we have to weed our way out of. We have to move towards getting out of a system that splits a nation in half and move towards something that's more united. As long as you have a a system where you have one side as a government and one side, namely opposition, opposition Mm -hmm. is a negative right itself. That means you're just opposing. It's saying it right there. As long as you have a system like that, you're always going to have the banter that's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And it's unhealthy because sometimes we get so wrapped up in the tit for the tat 
and I'm right, you're wrong, he did this, he said that, we lose focus on the issues that really need to be addressed. If all the energy that gets put into back and forth arguments on a daily basis, this article saying this person said this, or this person did this, and everybody using it as a political football, if all that energy was focused into actually coming up with viable solutions to the education issues, to the crime issues, to the issues that of unemployment, issues that everyday Romanians get up and face every day, we would be so far along the way of solving them right now. If all the great minds that are on both sides of the political field came together and just focused on the issues and not who's bringing these solutions, but that someone's bringing these solutions, and that it might actually be a good idea, then we can make some headway and achieve any goals that we want as a nation. But until then, we're going to have this advice of lead. But this is what we have right now. We have party politics. So as they say, that's a two evils. Which one is it? Yeah. You know what I think we should go back to? It goes back to the old Roman Republic, where everybody, there ain't no pies and nothing, where mental matters get settled by arguments and fistfights. Bring that back. That's, Bring it back. That's what the Chinese do, you know. But, um, <laughs> but the thing is, we, we agree. We have denounced the, 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 yes, it was. We have denounced the Westminster system several times now. I don't like it. We, we absolutely agree that it's archaic and it's divisive. But <laughs> democracy is archaic and divisive. Yeah, exactly. It's That's why I said bring back the monarchy. It's become more along the lines of a popularity contest about who can get more people to like them and less about Pauses. what this person do. You know what I mean? So I feel like I'm only asking you questions on one side because I know that we don't normally get this spectrum. Right. Of, yeah, because you know, nobody else wants to talk to us. Yeah. So, you know, it, with that being said, I, I, you said that you was inactive, right? So, why do you feel as though that the PLP, at in its current state, has lost its way from where it was before, or are you inactive for personal reasons? Well, I feel like it's a bit. It's gone astray a bit, but it's only. It's, I feel like they say it's it's through the ego. It's like it's so many when you have so much ego in a room. So many egos in the room fighting, 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 and clashing, you're gonna have problems. And that's normal. And it's just a matter of being ready to sit down and work out those issues and really make an invested in effort in ironing out the wrinkles and getting things sorted. And I just feel like at this moment, I don't feel like everything's so teachy. And that's just my personal opinion. Like, I feel like when I was there, very active, things that could have been done weren't done. And it comes to a point where sometimes you're just like, okay, let me take a step back. Maybe it's me. Maybe I need to take a step back and see what's going on because I'm really not happy at home right now. So I had to make a decision. And with the exit of the um, former opposition leader, I felt that was my time to say, yeah, you know, how that came about, I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I kind of like the former opposition leader. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Come talk to us, Mark Bean. We love you. <laughs> yeah, he was, I mean, he was, he, in my opinion, he had, he had a vision. He had a guy. I'll, I'll give you that. He had a vision to do for self. I mean, everyone says we have big base issues in this island. Everyone wants to point your finger and say, oh, the white man did this, or the white man does this. Then we have a leader that rises and says, okay, how about we do for self? How about we be the masters of our own destiny? Stop looking for other people, or point your finger and saying other people are hurting us back. We can actually do something. Pull all resources. Do what we can do to help build our own self. That's why I like Mark. And take ourselves in our own direction. But we didn't have those discussions. Those were, that was his vision. That's what he spoke. But we didn't have those discussions. Instead, we had a constant leadership battle, a constant attacks, constant fighting, constant infighting, and infighting, and infighting. And I won't go into the, I won't be that person that will go into details about the inner workings of the PLP. Yeah. What happened? I'm not that guy. No, no. But I will tell you that I, I was not happy with the fact that 
leader after leader after leader with challenge publicly and internally by their own people. Mm. Leaks to be pressed, different things, and nothing being done about that. So, I was having served on the three leaders of the Progressive Labour Party and seeing it happen to each one of those leaders and knowing that it happened to each one before. I just felt that, you know, I can't do this. I'm here for a reason. I'm here for the people in this I'm not putting my hand on the chopping block for it to be chopped by the same people that I'm standing with. Mm -hmm. And so we can come together and actually work together and show Bermuda that we are something strong, that we are something to be reckoned with, that we are representing them. And so we can show that we're representing ourselves with dignity. And I take a step back from it. So yeah, I was unhappy with how the last leader sit challenge for a boat and how the last leader arose. So, so you, you take a step back. So you, you, you just feel like there's too much um, infight? Like too, yeah, too much infight, too much division in the party? Like one leader hasn't been able to really consolidate the entire PLP. Like it's, it's kind of like the UVA seems like they're consolidated, but you can also see fractures in them as yeah. well. So it's, yeah. But I feel like they might be just a bit better at presenting a unified front than yeah. the Well, PLP. believe me, and trust, trust me when I tell you, I actually, I'm actually a person person that I talk to a, a lot of people. Even on the NBA side, I talk to people, and particularly the former Premier, but the, the other former NBA Premier. And just those things and different talks. Like, I know it's like, I'm not saying it's the same, but I know it's not so peachy on that side either. It's not like it's peachy anywhere. Yeah. In, inside, big and fighting. Oh, I guess that comes again to this party politics thing. Yeah. It's, it comes to, so you yeah. have a party, but then you have leaders, and then we have all these things that's clashing. That's when you gotta just take a step back and say, whoa. Are we really representing people or are we representing ourselves? Personal interest, yeah. Is it personal interest? Exactly. It's not a dime anybody could have given me to sway my vote anyway on any topic. But whatever, any position that I've ever held, there's no way anyone can sway my mind. I voted on principle and with respect to the people that I was representing. I mean, you have people during their egos in there and trying to get their way and having this my way or no way attitude is divisive and it gets us nowhere. So yeah, I would say that currently, I feel that both parties, but I can only speak particularly to the PLP needs to really show uh, that they're strong, that they're unified, and that they have a direction to go. Because when I took a step back, I wasn't seeing it. But I believe they have it in them. But when I have to take a step back, I just, I'm like, nah, I'm not feeling this right now. Well, I have yeah. one question as well, a big one. Yeah. And it's something that, you know, both sides right now are kind of, uh, not so much attacking the Abel but criticizing them on it. It's naming BPSU President Jason Haywood as a candidate. Now, a lot of people are saying that that not only negates the fact that all those uh, uh, rallies and marches now look very politically fueled. They, we've been saying that for yeah. months at those yeah, parts. Well, we, we did say that, but now <laughs> with, with him being named a candidate, it's made a lot of other it's people solidified. now kind of come out and say, okay, you have a labor union that is meant to be nonpartisan. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It is meant to be neither PRP or BIU. But oh, yeah. you, uh, PLP or OBA, yeah. No, the PLP and the BIE is the same thing. Yeah, but now you have somebody from the BPSU, a union, being named a candidate before stepping down. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? And there's rumors that even Chris Farber may be named as a candidate. Mm -hmm. And that, in itself, to me, is... A direct conflict of interest. Yeah. Because they called for Wayne Scott's resignation from the Gaming Commission. And even we said it was a little bit fishy. Yeah. yeah. But Mr. Dunch and Mr. Shoots called us. Yeah. They said, listen, come talk to us. Let me explain to you why. Because we said that we should have resigned. Yeah, we, we, we had a question because that, that, that seemed a little fishy. But 
you know, your God. Yeah, you can you can say I wouldn't say it's a conflict of interest in that light because of the fact that Jason Hayward has always, well, as far as I know, as long as I've known, it's been a member of the Progressive Labor Party, and it's not a conflict of interest because the Progressive Labor Party is a Labor Party. But oh, well, even if he was, even if he was a member of the One Bermuda Alliance, that's a political affiliation. But it doesn't negate the fact that you have a duty. And I don't think I don't think him being a PA, BP as your president and a candidate is a conflict of interest because I can guarantee you, if successful, not only will he obviously have to make the transition and step down as the BP as your president, really? but yeah, he, he has to. Does he? But his integrity, his integrity wouldn't allow him to stand as the president of the BBSU and a, and a member of parliament for the ruling government or even the opposition. I'd have to see that his though, right? His integrity, I know full well his integrity wouldn't even allow him to clash like that. Yeah, because I would. He'll, he'll, he'll cause more problems for himself. Him running as a candidate is only offering himself for this service. It's offering himself up for another room. And I'm pretty sure that he that his membership knew his intentions, so they knew that they may be losing him as the, their president. I don't feel that that's a conflict of interest. If he was the PPSG president and the member of parliament, then I can see where you were coming from, saying that it's a conflict of interest. But he's only offering himself up. He may not be successful. So does that mean he relinquishes an important will for a chance? But it doesn't make any that's sense. what the PLP wanted me and Scott to do. They wanted him to relinquish his role for a chance. So no, he had like, the job. Then. Well, he might have had the job, ish. But I mean, when they called for his resignation, he had exactly was, transitioned into the job. Yeah. You know, it was pretty much I wouldn't say a rumor, but I mean, we all knew he had. They knew it, that he was being considered for the job, so they were like, yeah, "You need to." Present. They said he was the strongest candidate for the job, mm -hmm. but he hadn't transitioned into that job as of yet. So the, the, now, the gaming been, commission is not political at all. No. Not However, not. the BPSU. <laughs> With the leader, now remember, we would say the same thing even if he was champ champion for the OBA, but somebody, because remember, we, we went to the you know, People's people's Union meeting, we, we've been there. And we spoke very right. highly of uh, Jason Haywood as well, because he spoke to us. Yeah, he spoke to us. But you got to remember, you can say the Gaming Commission is not political, but you got to remember, certain things that the Gaming Commission may want to implement will have to go through Parliament. For legislation purposes. Yeah, but that has no, that's not political. That's simply them trying to do their job. The gaming commission yeah, is completely that. separated from I get that. politics. But him being a and him working on that commission and having a vote in the House of Assembly to navigate. Well, the that game, game, and game gaming's already gaming's yeah. already been yeah. approved. They're already right. working on it. That has nothing to do but with it. But there's still going to be tweaks and turns that may have to be brought to the House of Assembly, and that's a guaranteed vote. If not, necessary, level of not necessarily. Because uh, did, did you see the video that where we spoke to Mr. Dutchman's shoe? Because they cleared up everything, every question. Because we asked the exact same question. However, gambling, which has already been approved, and the People's Campaign and the Union and everything, which is a group that has the influence over a lot of people, mm -hmm. I would say that is directly conflicting because you could then use that to, you know. Well, let me fine line it real fast. I'm to fine line it, I the people right now are having trouble seeing it that way simply because when you have the unions who have said explicitly leading up to PLP, we're not PLP, we're not PLP, and then suddenly they are their headship is being put up as candidates, right? It's it's almost like if the gaming commission was which is not political it's not political but let's say uh michael Duncan said i'm going to put bob richards at the head of the gaming commission mm -hmm. and then the gaming commission is like oh well, we're not OBA, we're not OBA. Oh, well, it, yeah. oh, if alan let's say if mr dunch won a seat as oba yeah or ran for one even ran yeah for one. You know, it would be like a huge conflict of interest because you have now you would have the unions attached to one political party which is the plp so let's say the plp does win the next election it's going to flip and they're gonna move with the PLP, and the OBA yeah. is gonna go like that. And the way, Ms. and the way Mr. Dunch put it for the Gaming Commission, Mr. Dunch, he said that the Gaming Commission will treat which with, with whatever government is in power. If the union is being constantly, you know, tied to the PLP, I feel that that, that would have happened. Well, I can tell you this from 
my experience, the unions and the PL, the union and the PLP would have to be separated. Even though, like, like I said, you know Chris Farmer has been a member and is ran in primaries and everything else. Last PLP government, there were numerous strikes by the Bermuda Industrial Union because Chris Farmer is not the union and he has an obligation to listen to his members. And if his members say we are doing this, he has no choice but to do it. So him being a leader and a PLP member, a candidate, has nothing to do with the view of the people that he represents in that union. There were numerous strikes against the PLP government with Chris Farmer being a sitting PLP member. He has no control over that. He left those strikes. He had no choice but to. So there could be a separation. And when you have it, when you have, like you say, this supposedly conflict of interest, it's on the people to hold and watch closely and hold it accountable and hold your feet to the fire. Because there's no way me being a BIU member. And trust me, I'm a BIU member and I'm a PLP member. I will, I will, at the point where we have some of these strikes, I was at, in conflict with myself, like, wow. PLP executive and the union strike of what do I do? You go with the will of the people at the end of the day. What's right is right. If a decision is being made that is not right and it brings striking first of all, it's the last resort. It should always be the last resort. Is it? Sometimes, seems like you that every other weekend. Sometimes it may seem like it's a rush thing or if people get hot headed. I think the last like, protests were very rushed things. Um, you know, shutting I, down the bus service without telling anybody, blocking out the apartment without notifying anybody, which was technically illegal, like we said, pretty much half the time. I, I can disagree with that because I feel like the last ones were necessary. Necessary? Due to the issues that were at hand. Yeah, but they, had see, concerns. remember, remember, we never, we never said that it was wrong to protest. It's just how the protest was done, mm -hmm. which is the problem that we had. It should have been done by the books like every other protest. Proceeding that was, we have no criticism. Yeah, we have no right. criticism for the union itself. It was like the how it was done. It's mm -hmm. just the it's just the leadership. We feel as though it's we, compromised. We have a when you call on a meeting, you tell all your membership to come around, and you got the membership that you do that show up, and you ask them what do you want to do, and the majority vote one way. You have to go that way. No, mm, the majority is not always right though. But, but that's, that's what the union that's is. That's what the democracy is. I understand that, but at the same time, it, it, it does. A lot of people can say the majority was the right in, in electing the LBA government last election, but they did, right? In a democracy, we had to accept those results and move forward with it. Which is why I don't agree, I always agree with democracy. Which is why, However, like the union. Like, but, but still, it, it still, it still boils down to even if the people say that they want to protest, I'm not going to tell the people that they can protest, it's how they protest. Mm -hmm. It could have been done correct. This, you know, there's nothing illegal about protesting, but it, it, you just have to go through the emotion. Like, you have to let people know, hey, this is happening here, this is happening here. Make sure the kids know that they can't get to school these days. Make sure everybody can make accommodations so they can go to work because the bus is going to be shut down. Make sure that the police know so that this world is going to be blocked so we can make sure that they can guide things. There are things that need to be put in place before a protest is done. You can't just say, let's, let's go, let's go block parliament, which is legal. Yeah, yeah, that part's illegal, but hey. No, the whole thing was illegal. A lot the whole of, thing was a lot of a lot of things that were illegal that took place ended up the end result was a beneficial to us all. That's that seems to be the the yeah, mostly it's, it's accepted it's excuse for it, it's the truth. It is it doesn't make it right though. Hey, it, it doesn't make it right, but what is right? It's all it's all perception. At the end of the day, it boils down to being adults. It boils down to both sides that are at the table making a rational decision. Speaking and engaging and, and stop preventing it from going as far as it can go. Like, yes, the union makes the decision to strike, but it's also you gotta remember that the government also makes the decision to be, to tune back in. And that's the reason why the strike goes on because of the decisions they make that are not, that the union does not agree with. If the government it's the government. I guess I'm saying I'm saying that to say the government is just as strong as the union for any strike that goes on because they play a part as well. They're not negotiating. They're not 
that not being accommodating. I thought and that I, didn't negotiate with the government because Chris well, Farber came down to heal and said everybody go home. Well, I mean, they negotiated with Chris Farber, not them. But um, well, the Chris thing Farber's is, like, team, I think that we can get caught up in the illegalities of things yeah. for for hours, right? I think that the, the main issue is not so much illegality because, I mean, if you look at it, uh, for civil rights, a lot of that stuff was considered illegal, mm-hmm. but it was it was for development. You know what yeah, I mean? So I don't I don't I'm really about from sixty years ago. Yeah, but I'm not talking about so much like the legal the illegal part is a slippery slope, and I do agree that mm-hmm. things should have been done like my colleague was saying. But I do agree with you as well by saying that you know being doing things illegally sometimes have led to beneficial things as far as rights for us of people of color. However, what what I think the main issue is is that when you strike, your main goal should be to try and get the populace, the main populace, to see that you guys are really suffering, that this is the last resort, like you, like you said, and that we have tried and tried again. But what ends up happening is when you strike, the main populace sees BPSU President Jason Hayward and Chris Farber. And Reverend Tweed. And, 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 yeah, SPLP. So what ends up happening is it takes away from the entire strike because now everyone's looking at it as though it's an opposition's ploy. And I'm not saying all of them are, because mm-hmm. that's not always the case. But it looks like opposition's ploy to get at the ruling house government, right? Yeah, which is that's why, why we, we criticize the leadership. Yeah. Because we feel like the leadership the leadership of these unions are shackling the members by fighting this uphill battle with this looming conflict of interest. Because if I if it was like let's say BT a Bermuda Union of Teachers was uh, had a person that was a sitting OBA candidate, mm-hmm. and every time the PLP tried to pass something, we we was out there protesting. People with, from the PLP would say, "Well, of course they are, because look who's their leaders, their OBA." You know what I'm saying? And that's exactly what the OBA constituents say about the unions. Look at the well, of course they're going to strike. Look yeah. who their leaders are. Which is right. why we say that, as far as unions are concerned, concerned. Those leaders, I, I am a firm believer that leaders of unions or any other non-biased, non, non-political entity should not be involved in politics. In the sense that they shouldn't be allied to a party. They have to be involved in politics because the union's jobs is to hold government and um, workplace like, accountable. Yeah, I mean, they, that, that we, they need to do that. We need them to enforce that. However, when a union leader regardless if they're resigning or whether they're currently a union leader is involved with a specific party, it, it takes away from the union, in mm-hmm. my opinion. Right, but you know, I've never realized union leaders are elected. Yes. That's true. It's not like they fill out a job application and they got these qualifications and people say, oh, okay, so like six other the desk goes through the applications and selects this person. No, they're elected by a body of people, a yeah. body of their membership, just like members of parliament. I elected party people. And I guess it's in a sense it's true we have reflection of who elects you. So with with that saying that the majority of the B B I U members are BLP, right? Probably so. But did they elect his brother because it's BLP? Not at all. And that lies the difference. There lies the difference. Pinch PLP affiliation had nothing to do with him becoming the leader of the Bermuda Industrial Union, neither did Jason Haywood's. They got there based on their marriage and their work within their respective unions. So when you say that them being union leaders is conflict of interest with their political, only if they are successful in their bids for members of parliament would I say, yeah, now you're a member of parliament, you should not be the leader of this union because and I, I'm thinking of it of a different sense. I'm not thinking of it as because now the union is going to follow everything that the government does. I'm thinking of it as are you really going to be loyal to your leaders, to your members of your union, and do what's in their best interest while you're serving the government that they have an issue with? Which is conflict of interest. That's so I'm looking at the conflict of interest on a different side. Okay, I can I'm like, that. are you going to do the job that you're supposed to do for the union membership? Why are you on that side? When you guys are looking like, are you going to represent the people while you're doing the union side? Because I'm not looking at the union as the enemy. And I'm not looking at the government as the enemy either. But the governor, when it comes to unions, is the employer. Well, remember, you like like you always say, you think that you know politicians shouldn't have anything being done on the side, yeah. period. So if, you're working, so if you're working, so if you're working for government, the employer, 
are you going to represent me as the employee the employee needs? Well, that's a very interesting point, actually, no. because um, it is it actually is true that a lot of the OBA sitting MPs are actually employers of said people. So, you know, looking at it from that point, you, you can definitely see how it could be kind of like these opposing sides mm-hmm. both have conflicts. Right. But it's like, like I said, that's why I'm a firm believer, like, like my colleague mentioned, that they shouldn't have any anything outside of being an MP. Like if you have a company, you need to put a CEO or somebody in charge of that and you completely go into president mode and you step, step up. You know what I mean? Because yeah, I mean, a, few, a few of them do do that. I remember yeah. um, Mr. Mr. Kanner, yes, when, yeah. um, when he ran, he had somebody. I agree to a sense, because I, really, I agree that your priority, especially as a member of parliament, should be to your constituents and should be for the issues of the people. You should always be working in that. But hey, I'm, if I was ever to become an MP, I don't think uh, I think I'll still vote him. I love my job. Sorry. Yeah, well, bartending, bartending is not employing, you know what I mean? Like, you're not, you're not, you know, you're, you're not presiding over hundreds yeah, and hundreds right. of people. You're saying you shouldn't have another job or another responsibility. We, we, we feel that you shouldn't. We feel yeah. that, like, you know, if you're going to be a politician, that is what you do and all you do 150% of the I time. I feel like the people would be willing to compensate their politicians a livable wage. If, if they knew that they weren't making money on yeah. the side as well, and that and that it makes it makes a lot of sense, and it, it, come, it comes to the point because I agree with you guys in some way when you're saying this. Like, think about I had a particular issue where Prima Dunkley was the national security minister, as well as being the lead importer of goods in the island. It felt like that could have been a, that was a conflict of interest, and that. He either should have relinquished his role as the head of his company for the time that he's the Minister of National Security, mm-hmm. controlling the ports and the borders of the island, while importing them to the island, and also having the final say as the premier. I can, I can agree with that. Or he should have resigned as National Security Minister. That was a big and huge conflict of interest. And still he is being he's the premier. So Did in a way- the Minister of National Security? Yeah, yeah, money. Yeah, but he's a senator. He's still not a senator. Being he's the premier, he has the final say over anything. He can veto anything, pretty yeah. much. True. So I get what you're saying when it comes to those certain conflicts of interest. So I would agree. If Jason Hayden was successful in becoming a member of parliament, no, he should not be still the president of the PPSU. You no, know, should Chris Bryan if he is successful in becoming I, a member of parliament? I think that both groups I mean, need to uh, need to get leaders that are completely disconnected from politics because one of the main problems when we went to the um, people's campaign um, meeting people, people's campaign meeting? People's yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, one thing that we did notice about it and we even said this on our show we felt that we very much agreed with 70%, 75% of the things that Jason Hayward said however one, like, I'm not going to lie it was very PLP centric it was very much, you know, anti like Chris Ferber got on there, he compared the OBA to Trump and he said this and this and OBA that, OBA that, and appeal beacon, you know. Yeah. It felt it I was like You get the undertones. I don't not even undertones. It was flat out there in your face PLP. Which I'm not okay with. I'm not it's not not but with the party, but I'm not okay with an organization openly and directly supporting But you uh, you have these swing voters right now, like uh, a lot of people who are looking to vote. Mm-hmm. And it is a bit more apparent, like if you sit down at a at a meeting, you're like, oh, this is a OBA meeting. You know what I mean? Because when you when you aren't tied to to a, a party line, right? You can kind of get that gist of, oh, well, am I really learning facts or am I learning rhetoric? Rhetoric, exactly. And when you when you're a person that wants to decide who to vote, both parties are guilty of this, where they sometimes they instead of hitting you just numbers. Or like uh, progression, it's kind of like this undertone of like, this is what we've done, this is what the PLP hasn't done. Mm-hmm. Or this is what we've done, this is what the OBA won't do for black people. You know what I mean? And it's like, you That's get this, you, you get that. So swing voters right now are looking and they're like, okay, so who do I vote for? Who do I trust? You know what I mean? And that's, and that, and that is true. That is, and that's the sad reality that we live in. It's like when we look at politics and that's Facebook, Twitter, everything. When you look at your timeline, you're seeing back and forth, back and forth. Oh, well, the OBA is this. Does the OBA care for you? And then you have, oh, Brett did this. Brett made some bit bad on um, bootleg sizzle. And la la la. Look, he, is this somebody you want to trust? And it's like, as a, as a 
the other young man, myself, is yeah. like, I'm thinking like, hmm, I want to put on issues. I want to know. I have a lot of issues in this island right now. I'm not happy with a lot of things that a lot of the way the way a lot of things are going in this island right now. Who is telling me what they're going to do about it? I want to hear you. When you come out and you say, this is my platform, this is what I have to offer. I don't want to hear because the OBA did this. And the OBA has been a poor government, the OBA, the other guy, Michael Dunkley. I don't want to hear about that. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I wasn't born today, I've been here. I know what's going on already. I know, I know the track record of the Progressive Labor Party, I know the track record of the Ron Bermuda Alliance. What I don't know is, what are you going to offer if successful in your bid to become the next government of this island? Exactly. Well, I want to know what are you going to do about the concerns I have. We just left with a legislation for seven grams of marijuana being allowed on somebody's person that got passed in the House of Assembly and stopped there. Like, you got so busy in all of this year, you have such an important piece of legislation on the table that's passing the House of Assembly. Now, part of it's dissolved and it's still there. Where are our priorities? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do to fix education? What are you gonna do to improve the lives of our children? What are you gonna do to stop abuse? What are you gonna do for the seniors that are being shorthanded, that are being well, cut off the benefits, left at the hospital by their families. What yeah. are you going to do and encourage your families to get out there and work and build their family? It's not all about the government giving handouts or the government saying, I'm going to fix this problem. It's about the government speaking in dialogue and helping people engage in ways where we all can come together and come up to solutions with these problems. But instead of doing that, you're getting back and forth with the mudslinging, during during stands, and there's so much gladness, they're so honest about the shadow. Mm -hmm. Well, there you have it. Nobody's doing that. Just, nobody's that's, speaking no. But they're, they're, like, that's that's really it. Like just who like if, if if you have you know who both parties comfortable, find out what both of them are going to do for you. And if you don't get an answer, make them give you an answer. Might not be the answer you want to hear, or it might not be the most conducive answer. However, get answers and ask questions before you vote. Yeah. Do not side with the left. Well, we don't really have a left, we have two rights. So, yeah. Don't side with one, because you've always been with that one, or because your family's been with that one, or don't side with the other because you don't like the other one. Find out for yourself. Ask the questions. Yeah, and it's not about whether or not this MP is dated your boyfriend or this and that. Focus and it's on it's policy and focus on what the person is trying to bring to the table in the house. And if you don't want to ask the questions, tell us. We'll ask them for you. We've done it before. Yeah. And speaking of it, just just so we're wrapping up now. Can you ask um, the PLP to come and speak to us? Please, because it's like they don't want to talk to us. <laughs> like, it's like, okay, now, uh, you know, people think you're biased. No, I don't care what people think, I'm just letting you know right now, we want to talk to somebody. But at the end of the day, man up. Be Thank man. you. Speak, speak to the young guys. I mean, I don't agree with everything these young brothers are saying. But you're talking said, to us. But I'm here, they actually have some points. They have better points and they have a right to be heard and they have a right to have their questions answered. Same way everybody's calling it from Cream and Don't Need to get into this debate. Yeah, no. Come and speak to him. No, you, guys speak better to you guys you guys you guys can do it. You guys can hurt you on. I believe in you know? So come and speak to these young brothers. Don't shy them off because you feel that bias. Everybody has some type of bias. Let's just work together and hash out those biases and just talk and make yeah. solutions. Yeah. And yeah. for the record, for the record. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for the record, if anybody from the opposition agrees too, we the same courtesy that we showed Premier Dunkley will be shown to you. This is not you know, ain't no ambushes, ain't no over gonna be like, yo, you didn't do this, you didn't no, yeah. no, no, no. no, no. And nobody got time for that. We just want to talk to you because we want to get the information out there. That is what we try to do. We try to get the information and present it so it can be distributed to those that do not have it. Yep. So come talk to me, brother. And as you can see, 
uh, we had somebody who doesn't agree with us, and no one got punched in the face. <laughs> so, <laughs> not us. I might punch you in the face, but you know. Yeah, we might punch you, John. Well, you know, we, we ain't good at him. We all right. But we appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you very uh, much. Hopefully, we can probably have a follow up uh, sometime later on. Yeah, you know, later on. Yeah, we'll you never know. You know. Yeah. Special thanks to our sponsor, Choices. Go get your bomb ass outfits and summer from them. And. We know whatever. I need to understand that. Check it out. It's a type of news. I'm Dodge Freeman. That's Bruce Robinson. This is Mr. Dickerson. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yes. That's exactly what we.